Are you tired of getting the same old bouquet of roses for that special someone in your life? You know, it's the gift that basically says, here you go, now watch these slowly die over the next two weeks. Instead, I suggest my fellow SolidWorks users try something a little different by modeling this rose for that special someone. It will be a gift that shouts, hey, I care about you so much that I learned SolidWorks surface modeling just for you. And like my love for you, this version of the rose will last forever. Welcome to our four-part series where we will be using several surface modeling techniques to build this highly organic form. Let's begin by opening up a new part file. And I'm just going to adjust my scene to make it a plain white background. We will start by building the various petals of the rose from the inside out in somewhat of a spiraling fashion. Let's draw an open sketch on the top plane. I'll start with an ellipse snapped to the origin, and I'll draw in a center line which I'll use for trimming in a minute. Dimension the major axis to 0.175 inches, and the minor axis to 0.125 inches. Now using the Trim Entities tool with the Trim to Closest option selected, trim away the right half of the ellipse. Now I'll use the Partial Ellipse Sketch tool, which is a unique tool. First click where you would like this center of the partial ellipse to lie, then click where you would like the ellipse segment to terminate, and then click where you would like the segment to start and drag back to the end point. Now I'll add a simple three-point arc and set several relations and dimensions to fully constrain this sketch. Exit the sketch and with the sketch still highlighted, navigate to the Surfaces tab in the Command Manager. Note that if you don't see the Surfaces tab as an option, just right click on any of the available tabs and you'll see the option to show the Surfaces tab. Now click on Extrude Surface and we'll extrude this 1.5 inches. I don't want this top edge to be on a single plane, rather it should have an organic shape. So I'm going to trim this surface using another swept surface. Let's enter the 3D sketch environment to sketch on this surface. But notice as I hover over the surface, it is actually made up of three separate surfaces. This is because the original sketch is made up of three different lines. Before we make our 3D sketch, we need to make it a single surface. Right click the original sketch in the history tree to edit it. and navigate to Tools, Spline Tools, Fit Spline. Here we can select our three lines to make them one continuous spline. Just make sure in this case that the Closed Spline option is turned off as this is an open sketch. Now under Sketch, enter the 3D Sketch environment and navigate to Tools, Sketch Entities, Spline on Surface, or you'll see the Spline on Surface tool in the drop-down under Spline in the Command Manager. Notice with this tool you can sketch a spline that stays hugged to a surface you start the sketch on. Remember that you can't jump across multiple surfaces with this tool, so keep that in mind when using it in the future. So I'm just going to sketch this organic form on the surface, making sure the endpoints are snapped to the edges of my surface. Exit the 3D sketch and sketch on the right plane to draw the profile for our sweep. 
In this case, we will just draw a 0 0.015 inch straight line snapping its midpoint to the point on the spline that intersects the sketch plane. Exit the sketch and navigate to Swept Surface in the Command Manager and select the 3D sketch as the path for our sweep. Now select the Trim Surface command and using a standard trim type, select the Swept Surface as the Trim tool and we will select the portion of the main surface we'd like to remove. There we have a nice organically shaped edge. So I'm going to create another spiral shaped surface just like this one and I'll see you on the other side. Here we have the two surfaces that make up the very center petals for our rows. Now let's model the next layer of petals using swept surfaces. Sketch on the right plane and use the spline tool to model the cross-sectional shape of the petal. I'm going to go ahead and dimension the top and bottom points, and I'll adjust my spline handles to create a slight S-curve shape to this petal. Now let's sketch our sweep path on the top plane. I'll use a simple circular sketch with the center slightly offset from the origin. And I'll draw in a construction line at 45 degrees to use as a trimming guide. Now using the swept surface tool, select the profile sketch and then the path sketch to create the surface. Again, let's use the spline on surface tool in the 3D sketch environment to create an organic sweep path for trimming this petal. Here I can create a nice rounded path that wraps around the whole petal and I want to ensure the endpoints are snapped to the bottom edge of the petal. Now on the top plane, sketch a simple line profile. We want the line to be as close as perpendicular to the arced bottom edge of this petal, but you can just eyeball it. Again, sweep this profile along the 3D sketch to create our trim surface. And with the surface still highlighted, enter the Trim Surface tool and select the portion of the petal you'd like to remove. Now let's convert these first few petals to solids by using the Thicken tool. In the Command Manager, you'll see the Thicken tool which you can use to thicken any surface inward, outward, or in both directions. In this case, we will thicken the surface in both directions. Keep in mind that the dimension you enter here will apply in both directions, so 0.5 inches will equate to a 1 inch thick part. 
This is the opposite of how, say, the mid-plane option in an extrude tool works, which takes your entered dimension and extrudes half of that dimension in both directions. I want these pedals to be rather thin at 0 .006 inches, so I'll enter 0 .003 inches here to thicken that amount in both directions. To wrap up part one of the series, let's pattern this pedal to the other side. We will touch on the circular pattern tool in part two of the series, so here we're going to use the body move copy tool, which can be found in the features command manager. Enter the tool, select the body you'd like to move or copy, and under the rotate option, we're going to select the origin to rotate around. Rotate this pedal 180 degrees around the Y axis and ensure the copy option is selected. There we have the very center of our rosebud complete. Much like close interpersonal relationships, this rose has many, many layers to it. So stay tuned for part two of our series, where we'll use more surfacing and patterning techniques to model the outer layers of rose petals.